And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The scientific community is telling us if we do not address the global crisis of climate change, transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to sustainable energy, the planet that we're going to be leaving our kids and our grandchildren may well not be habitable. That is the like If you were to say to him, how's the tongue today? Here's a Bernie said, the tongue is always very good. And one of the reasons the tongue is good <laughs> is because the capitalists are the ones who made certain the tongue is not as good as it was in Poland. i got to tell you, as good as the tongue is today, the tongue was much better years ago before the capitalists put too much brine in it. The pickles are pretty good today, but the fact is the pickles are not what they once were. America's pickles have gone straight downhill with the advent of the corporate structure and the corporate mentality. When this was a family-owned business, when pickles were made by families, the pickles were much better. And as a result of corporate welfare, I must say, in all fairness, the corporate welfare has destroyed the American pickle. Yeah, that's my summary of the entire so-called Soviet-era debate. I felt like I was watching something from the Khrushchev era in color. In other words, if you were to change that last night's stooge debate, so carefully controlled, Bernie Sanders set up strictly to make Hillary look normal. She's about as normal as that cuckoo clock I just played behind Sanders. I don't know about you, but I got a migraine from watching it. I'm sick. I didn't really drink last night. Nothing. Two beers and a dinner at, at the Basque place I go to. After I, I had to run out. I couldn't take it. And I am stuck with a hangover. Not from the beer, not from the veal. I got a hangover from watching those those people last night. So I did something I've never done before. I tweeted during the debate. <clears throat> I'm just getting into it. It's new for me. And um, here are some of my tweets. First, I said, will Bernie wear a clean suit for the debate or a filthy workers' party outfit? People seem to have liked that one. And then I'm, I'm going to go to the... Uh, <clears throat> The freak book account that I have. I mean, Facebook, freak book, whatever it's called. Look, if everyone's doing it, why not do it in the road, you know? And the fact of the matter is, it's fun in a certain strange way, but it's a waste of time. At the end of the day, tweeting is a, is a waste of time. That's why I never did it. So I tweeted that. Then I tweeted uh, Axelrod, Obama's brain being worshipped by Cooper. By the way, Cooper's glasses, did you see? It? I wrote, what sick glasses is Andy Blooper? When he first came out with those, they were like Martian glasses. Who, who was his ophthalmologist who picked these glasses for him? And by the way, you could just imagine being as vain as that guy is, how many hours, days he must have spent with his ophthalmologist picking those glasses. And he made a mistake. They made his eyes look narrower than they already are. Anyway, that was in the beginning. Then came the psychopath, the biggest failure in presidential history being featured on tape by CNN. And I couldn't believe what I was watching. They were running a tape of the loser. The man has wrecked the entire world and the nation. And he gets up there talking about everything is glowing and great and they want to keep it going with more Democrats. Then Sheryl Crow, I thought she had passed away years ago. I'm glad to see she's still alive. I said, what? Sheryl Crow? They, dra they dragged her out to sing the national anthem? So I tweeted this. I said, I outdrew Sheryl Crow at the Concord Pavilion 10 years ago. Why is she not singing the Communist Internationale? That got like 12,000 people that liked that one. Then Jim Webb, he's a hero. Uh, go Jim Webb, the only patriot on the stage. I happen to like Jim Webb. I'd vote for him, by the way. I think he is actually more conservative than half the Republicans. I'll tell you right now, Jim Webb is more conservative than Marco Rubio. And let's, let's put immigration aside for one minute. On national security, how can, you beat a man, how can you beat a man who is a U.S. Marine? How can you beat a man who served in combat? How can you beat a man whose son is a combat veteran? How can you beat a man who was Navy secretary? You can't. So I was very impressed. I didn't even know Webb would be on the stage. And it just shows you. It just shows you how demented and sick the American media is. That they completely eliminated Jim Webb from the build-up to this debate. They, they made it sound like it was Hillary the crazy crackpot ILGW Bernie Sanders and the other guy, whatever his name is. O'Malley was like, a, I don't know where, where this guy came from. He was like Vic Tanny's gym. Looked like he was just stressing out his, his pecs every minute. Didn't make any sense, but every minute he was showing his, his shoulders and pecs. I didn't know what he was talking about. But nevertheless, okay, so it was Bernie versus uh, uh, her. 
Speaking of her, I don't know about you. I think that's why I have a migraine, just looking at her. That smile, that fixed, sick smile gets me ill. That uh, Cataway the Cream look, I can't stand it. Always on top of everyone. Always has to be right. Always a laugh. Never answering a question. Haven't you had enough of her? I, I would take Bernie Sanders over her. At least there would be somebody new to her. I've had it enough with her. How can you if vote for this woman? Can anyone listening to the show tell me what she has done that qualifies her for the presidency? And speaking of her, and I don't mean to be rude in any way, and I'm not trying to insult anybody with this, but I, I did an analysis, a quick one, and I analyzed that underneath that coat she was wearing, the amount of material on her pantsuit, the yardage, could make three burkas. If you were to cut the pantsuit up itself and stretch it out on a fabric table, three burkas minimum for an average-sized woman in Iraq. Just saying, I'm just saying. Then I uh, tr texted, uh, whatever, Facebook, Kami Sanders pushing class warfare, her stock and trade. Then she talked about the poor again and how she's going to help the poor. And I said, hey, Hillary, does the Clinton Foundation share its, in its income? Then we got to the guns, and I wrote, so boring, leaving, the, the, leaving this, I can't take it. Dems are attacking guns and God as usual. Then they got into foreign policy, and Hillary said she was for a no-fly zone, so Michael Savage tweeted the following, Hillary for a no-fly zone, dot, 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 on Bill's pants. That got one of the biggest responses. You know, always that kind of thing. Then finally I had enough. About 45 minutes into it, I, I texted this, going out for Chinese, can't take the commie liars another second, looks like a staged Soviet event. So I go out. I was away for two hours. As I said, I had the veal. I had the uh, two beers, the light beers. I come back, and they were still talking on the stage, I think. Two hours later, the Soviet... Uh, so I said, back from dinner, are they still attacking working people and pandering to the street vermin? That's all. And then I woke up in the morning, and here we were again, more of the same. Biggest debate in history. It drew... Uh, look at the Drudge Report. The actual numbers show the opposite. That's all. Biggest debate in history. Now, shows lower numbers. By the way, I went to the... Um, InfoWars website run by Alex Jones, and I found an article that confirms everything I've suspected about Obama. A former NSA analyst says European officials are asking him how U.S. president could be impeached. They think he's quite mentally unwell. EU diplomat says my government, meaning the whole government, and he wouldn't name the government, believes that Obama is quite mentally unwell. How many years have I, how many months have I told you he's crazy? How many months have I told you the man is unfit to serve? How long would you sit there and say the king has clothing on when the man is showing all signs of cracking up and being mentally ill? He was probably mentally ill when he took the job. And if you analyze it and you go to the bottom of that about POTUS, they say he projects himself in a manner that makes him appear to have egomaniacal, sociopathic, narcissistic God complex. What is new about that? And, and, and someone said, had a senior EU, EU, EU diplomat, old friend asked me today, how does your impeachment work? My government believes Obama is quite mentally unwell. I don't know what that government might be, but I think it's an understatement. I mean, to say that they believe he's quite mentally unwell, I think it's an understatement. I think the men in the white coat should have arrived in the White House a long time ago with the butterfly nets. That's the opening to the show. And by the way, I listened to the so-called debate. It got me sick. Not one word about the Christians being slaughtered in the Middle East. What else didn't these wonderful, wonderful people who are also concerned about the middle class, uh, when, I, when I become a, the, the president, I'll make sure the middle class benefit and you'll have free college. Come on, Bernie. Bernie's going nowhere. Bernie has a very narrow band of followers. College students, mainly, uh, mainly marijuana-addled minds, government workers, People on the bottom who don't work at all. Who else, who else is in favor of that schnook? As I said to you yesterday, Bernie Sanders may as well be a product of the Hillary Clinton campaign to make her look like a centrist. That's simple. I don't want to repeat myself. If you missed the show yesterday, I can't repeat it today. But I'll open up the lines, 855-407-282. And if you think I'm just going to stand here and bash Democrats for three hours, you're probably right. But there is one Democrat, and I'll repeat it again, who stood out who I think is a great guy. I'd love to have him on the show, Jim Webb. Jim Webb has an interesting background. Jim Webb has many, many military awards and citations. Jim Webb was, as I said, a combat Marine in Vietnam. 
Did you know that he was awarded the Navy Cross for heroism in Vietnam? The second highest decoration in the Navy and Marine Corps? Did you know Jim Webb was also awarded the Silver Star, two Bronze Stars, and two Purple Hearts? Did you know that he did such brave things in Vietnam that he took a grenade to, to save his men and his war wounds left him with shrapnel in his knee, kidney, and head? The fact of the matter is this man is a hero. And he went to the U.S. Naval Academy, commissioned as a second Louis in the U.S. Marine Corps, went to the Marine Corps Office of Basic School, promoted to first Louis in the second half of his tour in Vietnam, and he served as a platoon commander with Delta Company, 1st Battalion, 5th Marines. That is a man who I know, but I saw it, no matter how they try to steer him into global baloney warming, no matter how they try to take guns away from Americans during the debate, they try to say, you know, what do you think about guns? And He wouldn't go for it. He held his ground. He was a man who understood the danger we are facing from the Islamo-fascists. You know, and I'm very excited by the fact that there's at least one Democrat, at least one on that stage, who is of the type that I talked about that used to exist, the conservative Democrat. He is, in essence, the, I don't know how to put it, what shall I say, the Reagan Democrat type, even though he's a Democrat. Now, he may have policies that don't make, meet up to the qualifications of some of the stooges in the right-wing radio business who think that they're the Pope and that they decide who is, who is a, a conservative. You know, who's conservative enough for me? Yeah, they, they, they sit there in their houses passing foul gas out of their ears, and they, they decide who's a conservative, laughing all the way to the bank. It sickens me. It sickens me that people sit there deciding you're perfect, you're imperfect, you're less than perfect, no one's perfect. But nevertheless, Jim Webb is my kind of guy. Threw himself on a grenade and shielded the uh, officer next to him from the explosion with his own body. Uh, to me, that's a man that uh, I, I think is a great man. That's simple. So they asked Jim Webb, uh, you know, about a commander in chief, which I thought was an amazing interchange about whether he thinks Bernie Sanders, the draft-dodging, communist, anti-American, backstabbing uh, slimeball from the Lower East Side of Manhattan would be a good commander-in-chief and whether troops would follow that slimy thing, that, that man who should be selling pickles and katzes. Wait till you hear the interchange when I return right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Financial. You're misinterpreting the hammer and sickle. When, when I was raised by my parents, God blessed them. Oh, I don't believe in God, but I don't believe in blessing them. But they taught me when the workers of the world unite, there'll be peace and justice on the planet. Now, I'll tell you something else. The right-wingers have misinterpreted what the hammer and the sickle mean. That is not a hammer nor a sickle. That is not a fist raised in the air. No. When you see Black Lives Matter with a fist in the air, they're not really raising a fist in the air either. And they have a justification to raise the fist in the air. No one else does. Because their lives matter and nobody else's lives matter. But I said that because the hammer and sickle is misinterpreted because of the right wing in this country. And when I become president, there will be the workers of the world and they'll unite and we'll be together. So he's going to be good now. I hope he stays in there. Patrick on WABC, I'm, I'm still developing my Bernie. Michael, I got to tell you, I, I love it. I, you should be a comedian. I sit here and I'm laughing so hysterically. I'm coming into New York City right now, and uh, it's just beautiful. But I, I, I really called because I want to mention two weeks ago, you were speaking about that commie talk phony, and you were speaking the truth, and New York City was hearing it, and they took you off the air. They took you off the air the next day because they didn't want to interfere with the commie, uh, you know, processizing in New York City. Well, wait, but I'm, I'm on the air now. I mean, I'm on WABC, right? No, no, you only took you off because of the day the Pope was here. They didn't want uh, you know, Well, I don't know that it was because of what I said about the commie Pope. I think it was because he had, there was a rally in Madison Square Garden, which is right, right in the same building as the, uh, as the station, and they, they cho chose to preempt me. I, I don't know whether it was political or not, but I'm on WABC, and I'm very happy to be on that and many, many other stations. If you were to ask, uh, ask me a question, make believe I'm Bernie Sanders, I'll entertain you a minute. <laughs> uh, you catch me off guard here. All right, Bernie, listen. Uh, do people deserve to have a gun, a Second Amendment, or should they be taken away? Although I come from a rural state where guns are very important, I am totally...